My Line. Brought to you by Geritol, the high-potency vitamin iron-rich tonic in liquid or tablets to help you feel stronger. And now, let's all play What's My Line? And now, live from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Now, a wonderful welcome for a wonderful guy, Robert Q. Lewis. Now, a wonderful welcome for the prettiest member of an always working acting family. Currently starring in Period of Adjustment, here's Jane Fonda. skillful because he's sitting next to me and he can help me. Bennett, sir. Having lovely Jane Fonda on the program reminds me of a terrible pun that was told to me by her father, Henry Fonda, worse even than the ones that John Daly perpetrates. It seems at one time he was in a little Paris restaurant and the waiter was insisting that he drink a whole glass of absinthe. And Fonda said, why are you trying to force this absence on me? And the waiter said, well, absence makes the heart grow, Fonda. Oh. <laughs> I, I'd like to see John Giles Taylor pop that, Mr. Day. <laughs> To say the least, I'm stunned. <laughs> Makes the heart grow fonder. I think it's only fair to warn the University of Arkansas in Little Rock and the printers in Memphis that Bennett's coming down your way this week. You can still catch a train or a plane and leave. <laughs> Bob Lewis, it's very nice to have you with us. Thank you, John. See you back again in a familiar place in the panel. And Miss Fonda, needless to say, we are honored by your presence. Thank you. We hope you have a pleasant half hour, both of you. I think you'll have an interesting half hour. We have some interesting occupations. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before my friends on the panel a little bit later in the program. Challenger. And now to meet our first challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? Chas J. Moore. Is that right? Just for fun, do any of your friends call you Chas instead of Charles? No, sir, they don't. Because I have that as a middle name, and some people <laughs> call me Chas. Well, there's an unimportant little point, don't you think? Right. Where are you from, Mr. Moore? Washington, D.C. From Washington, D.C.? Yes, well, it's sir. nice to have you. I was down in your town last night for the Touchdown Club dinner. We had a, quite an evening down there in Washington. Mm -hmm. I think all these folks will be familiar to you. May I present Mr. Moore, panel? Yes. Would you join me here, please, sir? You know how we keep score? Sure. All right, if you know how we keep score, we'll let folks in the audience in the theater and those at home know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right. Well, we can tell you that Mr. Moore is salaried and deals in a service. And let's begin the general questioning with uh, Bennett, sir. Well, Mr. Moore, I must ask an obvious question since you're in Washington, is your work in any way connected with the United States government? Yes, it is. Uh, you then work for the government? That's correct. For the national government, sir? Yes, sir. Is it a non-elected post that you occupy? Yes. Uh, is it a special branch of one of the three services, either legislative, executive, or yes. judicial? Well, it could be described as a special branch one of the three. Assuming years. here that you want to know whether it's incorporated in one yes. of the three, yeah. Would it be incorporated in the legislative branch? No. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Executive? Yes. Are you Secret Service? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Lewis. 
Uh, do you work in or about the White House? No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Fonda. Do you wear some sort of uniform? Yeah. Oh. Um... <coughs> uh, do people t uh, touch... Do you touch people? No. Four down and six to go, Mr. <laughs> Sir. Do you protect the person of the president or somebody associated with him? No. Five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you ever get to see the president very much? I mean, more than the ordinary person. Mm. I would say here that the, to answer truthfully, we would have to say that Mr. Moore would not be likely to see the president more than the ordinary person. In his particular, he might see him, but then by the same token, almost anyone who happened to be in the same vicinity would have the same opportunity to see him. So we'll give you a note but on that. Is that vicinity Washington or the White House grounds? Well, now, you just ran out of questions a moment ago, <laughs> Miss Dorothy. That six down and four to go, Mr. Lowe. Uh, we've established that you do not work in or about the White House. No, we haven't. Well, I asked that question. And Is I that a, your question? No, sir. I got a no on that, I believe, last That's time. That's right. Uh, then, does your work uh, uh, ever permit you to travel on behalf of the executive branch of the government? You mean leave Washington and, and That's exactly uh, travel to other I parts mean. of the nation? I get a no. no. That's seven down and three to go, Miss Fonda. No. Do people come to you for your service? Yes. Yes. Are they better off uh, mentally or physically. or physically after you've performed your service? I hope so. Well, I think here we might mislead you. I would say that there is no direct relationship to either their physical or mental well-being as a direct result of the service which is pervaded by Mr. Moore. That oh. makes it eight down and two to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Moore, have you got anything to do with United States currency? No. Nine down and one to go, Miss Kilgallen. You want to have a, a yes, just conference? Yes, have a conference. We have 30 seconds for a Something ridiculous just occurred to me. You know, the vice president's part of that executive branch, too. Yeah. Oh, that's very good, Mr. Lewis. Well, I don't know. As far as I know. But he wears a uniform. Well, he might take care of the White House. No, I asked if he took care of anybody connected with the, yeah. with the president or somebody in his entourage, so I presume that would include Lyndon Johnson. I'd like to find out about that. Is it a policeman's uniform? Yeah. Well, let's say it is a uniform which would have as its, its purpose... It has a badge. Might be chief of police of Washington, mm -hmm. D.C. That's part of the, that's part of the executive... It thing. is? Yes, so. because it's... Are you the 30 chief seconds of, are up, Dorothy. Are you chief of police of Washington, D.C.? Chief of police of Washington, D.C.? No. D. No, that's right. Ten down and no more to go. Actually, I thought you might get to it, and Dorothy, you were very close in your first question. Actually, Mr. Moore is a museum guard and currently detailed to guard Mona the Mona Lisa. 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 Yes. Uh, <laughs> now, actually, uh, you, are, you are with the National Museum, the National Gallery, the National Gallery of Art. Is that connected uh, with the executive branch? Yes, it is. It's in, it's in, actually, it's the, uh, it's created by the, the uh, Smithsonian Institute is the parent organization. It was established by a joint resolution of the Congress, but it's connected with the executive branch of the government, and its overall servicing and so on. I read the paper coming up from Washington this afternoon, and if I read correctly, or if my memory serves me well, uh, I believe it said more than 35,000 people uh, yes, went sir. to the gallery yesterday to see That's the right. Mona What is the, you know what the overall total is so far since you started showing it last week? Oh, I should say about, uh, including today, about 120,000. 120,000. Mm -hmm. Now the line... Do you have any real guarding to do? I mean, does anyone ever try to do anything naughty? Yes, we do. <laughs> well, they do? Let me put well, it this way, Miss Jane, again reading the paper coming up from Washington, the Phillips Museum. That's correct. There's a little item in reading the Washington paper. paper John. The, wa Washington, <laughs> what the Washington newspaper. But the Phillips Museum in Washington lost a canvas yesterday afternoon. Somebody stole a canvas out of uh, the Phillips Museum in Washington yesterday. Mr. The Moore. Secret Service and the Museum Guards and the United States Marines are all involved in the protection of the Mona Lisa, right? That's Mr. Correct. Moore, could you tell us where Mona is going to travel from Washington? What other cities in the United States will have an opportunity of seeing the Mona Lisa besides New York? Only New York. I thought one or two other cities were in on it. No, sir. Now, it comes to New York on the 7th of February, Bennett, and stays here, I believe, until 4th March, something like that. 
But I learned something. It's painted on a piece of poplar wood. Now, there's your little piece of information well, for this week. Well, that's why it's such a poplar painting. I did that so Bennett couldn't say it first. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Moore. It was a joy to have you with you and a joy to puzzle the panel with your occupation. Now to meet our next challenger, would you enter and sign in, please? <laughs> Candy? <laughs> Brassavan, is that right? Yeah. Is it Miss or Mrs. Brassavan? Miss. Miss Brassavan, where are you from? Miami. Miami? Florida. Florida? And you came to New York tonight where we've, I think we've dropped uh, nine degrees of temperature in the last hour. Well, it's nice of you to come up from those warm climes nice to visit to us. <laughs> Miss President, may I present our panel? Thank you. Now, would you join me over here, please? Do you know how we keep score? Yes. Fine, then we'll let the audience at home and the audience in the theater know exactly mm -hmm. what your line is. Panel, we will tell you that Miss Brassavan is salaried and deals in a product, and we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Robert Q. Lewis. Uh, Miss Brassavan, may I call you Candy? Thank you. Yeah. You may call me QZ if you like. <laughs> is uh, is uh, your product something that I might uh, use? Yes. Uh, would it also by, be used by members of the opposite sex? Yes. Uh, is it a product that I might? <laughs> Would I be, uh, would I feel kind of odd uh, by any chance using your product if people were watching? No. 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 One down and nine to go, Miss Father. <laughs> oh, there. Um, oh, 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 wait, another direction. Um, <laughs> the people, do people come to you for this product or do you go to them? Oh, I can't ask both. Do people come no. to you? Well, no, actually, I think we can't say, Miss Jane, that people specifically come to Mrs. Uh, Miss Brassavan to, to get the product. They don't come to her. So we have to give you a no. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Brassavan, when people <laughs> use this product, are other people aware of it? <laughs> well, I would say that there are circumstances which uh, <laughs> would make it possible for other people to be aware that the product was being used by another individual, yes. When people saunter down Collins Avenue in front of the Fontainebleau or Hank Meyer's publicity affairs, would, uh, you'd know, would you know that they were using this product? If I look at you mean, would, it, would you know they would were using visible? this product, the product as they visible? sauntered down? Yes. I would say that under uh, intimate circumstances of, uh, <laughs> say, proximity, where the line of sight was clear, if the product was in use, it, it would be possible to determine that the product was in use. Would the product be used above the neck? <laughs> yes. Would it be ever put into the mouth? Yes. It would. Uh, when it was put into the mouth, would it be consumed utterly? <laughs> would, it be, that, would it be, well, that I make it much more simple, would it be something to eat or drink? Yes. Would it be something to drink? No. No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. I'm going to get a yes. Would it be something to eat? Very good, Dorothy. Yes. Please, <laughs> guys. Been waiting a long time for this one. Um, is it a food connect, connected with any nationality originally? Mm, I would... Such as a pizza, Chinese food, Pizza, spaghetti. Chinese, pi a Chinese spaghetti. pizza, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean, spaghetti. Now, I, I'd be quite frank with you, Dorothy. Has national origins. I'd be quite mm -hmm. frank with you, I don't know. Do you know? Mm, yes. Yeah, I think yeah. very probably it has a specific, they know. specific origin. Well, let's say this, that it, it probably does any. have an origin that is... Uh, would it be that, used as a main course? Yes. I think it would depend a good deal on how hungry you were. <laughs> it could be used as a part of the main Would it ever be sold at a stadium? Sold at a stadium? 
such as a hot dog I was thinking of. I don't know. I, have, I don't think so. I don't think so. Four down and six to go, Mr. Lewis. Well, that throws out uh, what I had in mind, which was a bagel. <laughs> Tell me, is this product uh, sometimes <laughs> a white bagel? What's the bagel? Yeah, that's what I mean. That's what threw out the question. I'd like to find one, but... Uh, is this product partly meat? Yes. Uh, comes from an animal. Uh, would it be a product of a cow? Or a, uh, would it be a beef product? Yes. Uh, would it uh, take a... In its completed form, would it have a specific shape? I think usually we'd agree it has a specific shape, wouldn't we? Hmm? Would I be able to get it at Lindy's here in New York? I would think so, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've been on the coast for so long. Well, I was going to say, is there a covering for this meat product which is other than meat in its uh, finished state? Yes. Yeah. Is it in the bologna family? I don't know anybody in the family. I'm <laughs> Is it? Is it in the bologna family? I knew my education had been neglected. Yes. Well, I'd say, yes, of the character of somebody well, who might I don't might care what it is. Do you stuff them? Is that what you do? <laughs> no? No, actually, I'm going to throw the cards over because I... Salami is salami. right. <laughs> This Pastor Man is with the American Kosher Provisions Company and travels all over Florida selling salami. What lucky salami is all I have to say at this juncture. <laughs> and thank you very much, Miss President, for being our guest and what's my life. <laughs> and now we'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment after this message. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which my friends in the panel are always blindfolded. Are those blindfolds in place, panel? Yes, yep. sir. Good. Will you enter mystery challenger and sign in, please? of the mystery challenger one question at a time in turn moving clockwise and let's begin with uh miss fonda are you in the entertainment field why yes mr sir are you at present currently mm. appearing either on the broadway stage or in a hotel or nightclub near the broadway area no sir i'm not one down and nine to go miss kilgallen are you a singer uh, no not yet Two down and eight to go, Robert Q. Lewis. Are you uh, in motion pictures? Yes, sir. Miss Fonda? Are you Lee Remick? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were doing so well. How did that happen? <laughs> I see everything she does, and I know her voice very well. Well, you knew, you knew she was in New York. Miss Remick, of course, is in New York because, was it Thursday? Thursday, I have a film opening at the uh, Radio City Music Hall. The Days, days of Wine and Roses. Days of Wine and Roses yeah. with Jack Lemon. yes. So you came to New York for your opening? Yes, very excited about it. it. Well, I should think you would be. Yes. I must say you should be very excited about a career that is no, properly mean. described as meteoric. Everything you've oh, done. Oh, right. well, thank you. I enjoy it. I love every minute. <laughs> we thoroughly enjoy seeing you, and we certainly hope that Days of Wine and Roses did everything you want for it. Like so. How many years is it since you were just playing a little band leader in Bud Schulberg's Faces in the Crowd? Uh, that's uh, six, six years ago. My, how you've come along. <laughs> My, how I've grown. Thank you. <laughs> and have you noticed how Bennett has changed? I was, I was an apprentice right before you did that in, in the theater where yeah. you played with Art yeah, Carney. Yeah, seven year itch. Yeah. 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 Oh, Who? Oh, oh Bennett? Seven year itch? No. no <laughs> oh, Art Carney. No. Well, heavens, I could always do <laughs> Well, Miss Lee, thank you very much thank for coming you. to see Enjoy us. It. Nice to have you with us and watch my life.
Well, all in all, panel, I must say that you've done very well so far tonight, and we'll have another contestant after this word from our alternate sponsor. And now to meet a final contestant, will you enter and sign in, please? R. C. Walsh. Right, sir? Nice. Where are you from, Mr. Walsh? Mr. Walsh is from Staten Island. Panel, may I present our panel to you, Mr. Walsh? Will you join me over here, please? You know how we keep score? Yes, sir. Fine, we'll let everybody in the theater except that good old panel, and the folks who are watching at home know exactly what your line is. I can tell you that Mr. Walsh is salaried and deals in a product. And we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Could I use your product, Mr. Walsh? Yes. You don't sound very sure of it. <laughs> well, I'm sure you would have a connection with its use somewhere along the line, Dorothy. If I used it, would I keep it in my house? No, don't think so. One down and nine to go, Mr. Lewis. Uh, is this a product that Eileen Farrell, who is one of your foremost residents of Staten Island, might use? I only said that because I wanted to mention her name. Uh, is this a product used by both sexes, Mr. Walsh? Yes. Uh, it is a product uh, that, uh, is it, is it a portable product? Could, would it be carried about on the person? It could be. It could be, and it is used more outside the house. Does this... No, wait a minute, who said that? Well, he said oh, it, yes. it wouldn't oh, be used in the home. Yes, that's right. In my right. home, mm -hmm. anyway, yes. he said. Right. Oh, it would not but be... But I don't want to mislead you. It, it's portable, but don't necessarily draw any conclusions therefrom. Well, then may I conclude that it could be used in the home, as well as outside the home? Then give me back my note. Well, no, you get a note of that. It was the other thing I was afraid. That, that stands. It is not used normally in the home. Yes. So you go on from there. Fine. Are you confused about it? Because if you no, are, I I'm want fine. you to know I am too now. Uh, <laughs> what are you I wouldn't want for? it in my home. No, I wouldn't. Well, <laughs> right. uh, is, this, is this product uh, something that has, is used, uh, applied to something else? Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I got with that. Uh, yes, yeah, uh, is this, uh, does the, uh, is the uh, product within a container? Sometimes. You mean when it's being used? No, when it is manufactured and I purchase oh, it. Oh, yes. Would I purchase it in a drugstore? No. No, I don't know. So. Two down and eight to go, Miss Fox. This product is manufactured. Yes. Is it useful? Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, that means that... Uh, um... <laughs> that means that it's useful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is it expensive? expensive? No. 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 Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Walsh, is there any metal in this product? Yes. Is this product used well, for either cleansing or beautifying in any way? Well, I would so. think so, yeah. yes. We could describe it as that. Cleansing rather than beautifying? No. No. Actually, we run out of time, and, and I want to be sure that nobody is upset about it, because I think you will agree here it'd be rather beautifying, because it's an interesting product Mr. Walsh deals in, and I'm sure you'd all like to have one, maybe a, a whole lot of them. <laughs> They're very great fun. Dentist drill. What? Dentist drill. Dentist, dentist drills made by S.S. White. S.S. White Dent Manufacturing Company. So every time you go to the dentist, you can take it, Mr. Walsh. I haven't got one in my house for you, your information. I haven't got one in your house. No. Thank you very much, Mr. Walsh. Nice Thank to have you. you with us, and what's my life? Again, Robert Q, it's good to have you back in New York with us and on What's My Line, and good night, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Good night, John. Good night, Robert. Good Thank night, you for Dorothy. coming. Thank you. Good night, you pretty thing, Jane. Good night, you handsome thing. Ooh. Good night, Bennett. Well, if we must miss Arlene, it's nice to have you in her place. Thank you. She'll be back next week, I hope. Good night, Chas. Good night, old boy, and I'm <laughs> glad to note that Miss Vonda didn't say you were handsome, and good night, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for being with us on What's My Line. What's My Line? CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Tottenham. Johnny Olsen speaking.